Amy asked last week about dues in the chat, and I said we would discuss it this week. And the original Green Party that came out of the 1984 National Organizing Meeting we had in St. Paul, Minnesota, in August of 1984. Uh, out of that came the Green, the Committees of Correspondence and the Green Committees of Correspondence. And finally, by 1991, the Green Party USA. So we had this party building process form the party. And all this effort was structured around a dues paying mass membership model. And this form of party was the invention of the left, the workers movement in European politics in the late 19th century. It was the way that labor and socialist parties figured out how to compete with the top down parties that already existed from the landed elites and the business owners. And of course, those parties on the right were funded by the wealthy and controlled by the wealthy from the top down. So the mass membership party was both a way to fund the labor and socialist movement and also for it to be democratic. So you'd have individual members, they'd belong to local branches, they'd be represented at higher levels of the party proportional to local memberships. And it was a way to build a, you know, incorporate, you know, the masses of people in the political process, as opposed to what had gone on before, which was a top down elitist, uh, you know, parties that, you know, offered voters, those who qualified. I mean, these parties were developed as the workers won the franchise in Europe. Um, it, the choices were given without the people participating in making those choices. And that's been the tradition with the American parties. They're memberless. We have local and state committees, but they don't meet to discuss policy and determine platforms for their candidates. They're mostly ways to you know, mobilize ballot petitioning in elections. Uh, if you have an issue uh, you want to raise in your city or town, you don't go to the local Democratic or Republican Party committee. They don't have local meetings for that kind of stuff. You go, you know, you organize an ad hoc group or an independent group and you lobby your city or town council and the mayor. Um, so American parties, the Democrats and Republicans, <coughs> followed this top-down model of the conservative European parties. The only exception was the Socialist Party in the early decades of the 20th century. They were a dues-paying mass membership party. They peaked at a membership of 113,371 dues-paying members in 1912. Uh, of course, the early Green Party movement tried to build a mass membership party, but in the 1990s, we had political differences in the more moderate wing, uh, the left leftist wing of the party split off and formed the Association of State Green Parties that advocated that the U.S. Green Party adopt the organizational model of the Democrats and Republicans. And this went on in the 90s, and it was very uh, contentious. But Ralph Nader chose to go to the association's uh, convention rather than the Green Party USA's convention. And everybody wanted to be with Nader because, you know, the reality was his base was much bigger than either of the two Green Party factions. So coming out of that campaign, the Green Party of the United States was formed as a federation of state Green Parties on the model of the Democratic and Republican parties. So the state parties are the members, not dues paying individual members. Now, some state parties are dues paying membership parties, but most are not. And the result has been poorer funding of the national party than we had in the 80s and 90s. Uh, the national party now relies on donations and the national budget has just been about 200,000 to 250,000 a year over the last decade. And that's just enough to support an office manager and a web manager, a little organizational overhead and some small contributions to candidates and ballot access drives. It's a pitiful amount for a national party, you know, that's serious. It has less funds than most modest local nonprofit organizations with a few staff people or two or three staff people. Um, so we should have dues to have a stable base budget for the national party. And, and think about it. There are 255,575 people registered in the Green Party, according to the last count from Ballot Access News. And that's just in the 23 states where the Green Party or the state election law allows people to enroll in the Green Party. And so one could estimate from that figure that, which covers about half the states, that there are probably about 500,000 voters that identify with the Green Party. Now, suppose the Green Party became a mass membership party and got just 10% of those who identify with the Green Party 
become dues paying members. And suppose dues were set at $15 a month, which is what DSA dues are uh, for a comparable organization. They peaked at 95,000 members in 2021. But of course, DSA members tend to be more upper middle class professionals, whereas Greens are more skewed toward the working class. So let's say uh, we have $10 a month as our dues for 50,000 uh, Greens. That would be 10% of those who identify as Green. That would generate $6 million a year compared to the 250,000 we're getting now. With that budget, the Green Party could pay for a lot of field organizers to help build strong local chapters and state parties, coordinate issue campaigns, and support election campaigns. It could pay for the administrative and technical staff we should have to really service the state and local parties. So funding is one reason that we ought to have dues. And I think there is another reason uh, for a dues-paying membership party that I think is even more important, and that is internal party democracy. Party members should have participation rights, but we don't have members or membership rights in the National Party. Right now, participation in the National Party is mediated by state parties, a good number of which are really small. They're just long-standing small cliques of old timers who have not and are not organizing anything beyond their little clique. They have the state party franchise for their state and they're happy to hold on to it as a small group. Um, rank and file registered Greens in those states or people that identify as Greens and new people who come in have little or no say in these state parties. It's hard to figure out how to participate in some of them. And even in the bigger and better organized state parties, the active membership flows in and out with the tide of events. They flow in when there's you know, a democratic administration and people get dissatisfied with the neoliberal austerity and militarism and corporate favoritism that we saw in the Clinton and Obama years. And then they flow out, you know, like they did when from the push of Trump and the pull of uh, Bernie Sanders reform campaigns in the Democratic Party. So you have to ask yourself, why should people who are not around building the organization, participating in the debates, developing our positions, uh, but do not support it financially. Why should they have a say in party decisions as they casually uh, flow in and out with the political wins? In a dues paying membership parties with members organized in the local branches, we will have a defined membership, uh, a place for people to participate in party discussions, a defined membership with membership rights to participate in those decisions. And then representation at the state and national levels would be proportional to the dues paying members, living, breathing people in state and local parties, unlike what we have now where the National Party doesn't count members. It uses a very complicated formula uh, using proxies for membership, like the number of candidates ran, the number of votes they received, how many are registered, and so forth. And these approximations are not equitable because the different conditions in different states, whether you can register or not, some states don't even collect reg party registration how difficult it is to get on a ballot so you can actually run candidates, the competitiveness between Democrats and Republicans in those states, which has an impact on the spoiler effect and therefore the votes that Greens receive and so forth. And it leads to absurd results. I mean, recently, uh, Texas, it was about 2018, or 20, around 2018, Texas dissolved because they'd lost their ballot status and people you know, just threw up their hands. And then the Republicans decided, well, the threshold was 3% in one of the statewide races. And the Republicans changed it to 2%, which would give the Greens a ballot line because the Libertarians had got qualified and the Republicans were worried the Libertarians were going to take from the Republicans. So the uh, Republicans wanted the Greens to take from the Democrats. So they changed the law and Texas had a ballot line and those Greens who had gave up came back to life. But for a period there, we had... And, and the formula gave Texas a large uh, allegation of uh, representatives on the National Committee, but there was nobody there to fill them. I mean, that's just the absurdity. Instead of counting living, breathing members and representing them proportionally, it's like the U.S. Senate and the Electoral College. Small states that are the least successful at organizing get disproportional representation. 
With a dues paying membership, we'd have a common membership standard for everybody across the country for representation in the National Committee and the National Conventions based on one member, one vote. So I would argue we should become a dues paying mass membership party in order to fund ourselves sufficiently and to function far more democratically. Now, how we get there and how we should share the national dues with state and local parties are questions you might want to raise, but I've said enough for now. And so let's get to your questions and comments. Ask the R, how is pay to play any different from the DNC's fundraising strategy? How are poor Greens supposed to join? Well, poor people's organizations like the NACP, the National Welfare Rights Organization, ACORN before the Democrats destroyed it, were all dues paying membership organizations. And in my experience, you know, raising funds and we've had local dues and, uh, you know, working class people expect to pay. They don't expect nothing, something for nothing. It's more the, the middle class people who say, oh, the poor people can't pay, but they're the ones that are being tight fisted. So it's not pay to play. Well, I guess you could say it is, but it's not, it's not, some people call it a poll tax. That's about general election voting. This is about participating in an organization. And part of participation should be financing it. I mean, if we're serious about a Green Party, we can't go on being broke like we are. And, you know, poor people will join. You can have a hardship provision as well. So the people really are broke. You know, they can participate, but uh, un until they, you know, get some income, we can waive their dues. 